Hello there. Welcome back to the, what is this, the third <laughs> installment of building our own app. Today, very short video, we're going to talk about Git, and we're going to use GitHub to kind of store our code base. So I have a few things. I'll leave a link to this below this video, a few notes and common commands, I guess, as it comes to uh, Git. I'm not going to go over every single one right now. You will learn roughly like half of those in this video just as we set this up. But let's actually kick it off with what is Git, the 30-second the version, the 30-second overview. And actually, you should just go Google this. What is Git? It is basically version control slash saving things. What is Git? It'll probably say something about, oh, well, distributed version control system or whatever. <laughs> I basically think of it as saving things. And you can always save changes, revert changes. You can open up multiple branches. They, that's what they call like, you basically take your code and then duplicate it. And then you can work on something. And then you can delete everything you did right there. If you were just testing, wanted to play around. Or you could merge it back into your main branch, so to speak. This will make a lot more sense once we start doing things. So the first, thing, uh, excuse me, the first thing we need to do is initialize Git. Period. Right now you can't. There, there's no Git. There's no nothing. So I'm in my topical map AI root, I guess, uh, the root of this project folder right here. Git init enter, and then we're done. <laughs> now we have Git. Uh, now it's not saved or anything. And by the way, by saved, this is all like on my local machine at the moment. I'm going to do two commands. I'm going to save my current project. Commit is actually what I'm going to call this. Sorry, I have like lots of lots of things open right here. Uh, I'm going to do this, and then we're going to actually push this to a remote repository. Is what this is called. Basically, you can think of it as like cloud storage. And we're going to use GitHub. It's absolutely free. I'll show you how to do that in a second. First, let's uh, add our first or commit our first commit, for lack of a better term. I'm not using like the preferred nomenclature, but it's okay. I'm going to actually clear this out. And actually, before they do it, you can always type git status and then hit enter to see some basic stuff here. So it's going to say what branch we're on. And by the way, you can actually say git branch and it'll list off all your branches. I literally have none. So I just have main or master, I suppose. Doesn't really matter there. Um, once you can create another branch, like git branch test. Huh. Oh, I don't know what that is. Maybe we need to like commit a branch first. I don't know. Let's do git add all. And basically how this works is you kind of add or subtract different files for each commit. So I'm gonna do git add all by that little period right there. You can also do individual files if you really wanted to. I'm gonna type git status again. And now all of these are green. You can see when I do commit all these changes, these will be committed. And you can actually remove these if you wanted to by doing this, git rm, and then you can kind of follow the commands there. Uh, it's very rare that I have to do any of that stuff, but it's good to know. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my first commit. You can usually do git commit and then dash m, and then something in quotation marks here. And this is a commit message that you'll see. So I'm actually just gonna type out initial commit. And I always just kind of write in what it is I did, what it is I changed, I guess. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do this just so you can see it. Now we're good. And I should be able to do, clear this, get branch. Okay, I don't know why it takes a commit in order to do that, but now you can do git branch, blah, blah, blah. Um, so there's a few things here. I'm actually getting off track a little bit. Before we do this GitHub stuff, though, your commit message is usually what you did. Just be descriptive. And it is actually helpful. You might just think, well, no one's going to see this, just me. Well, you're going to go back and look at your commits at some point. At some point, you're going to screw up, and you're going to want to go backwards to a previous point in time, to a previous save point, honestly. Like, I think of it in terms of video games. And you can do git log. That will show you a number of commits. And actually, if you do git log dash dash, I think it's one line. Is that right? Yes, that is right. Git log and then a dash dash one line will actually show you all of your commits. I just have one um, on one line each. When you don't do it like that, you'll see it actually takes up all of this space right here for each commit. 
Although this does show more information. You will actually use this. You will actually go back at some point. You will make a mistake and you're gonna end up looking like, how do I go back? <laughs> and then maybe you'll pull up my thing here. And, uh, oh, you know what? I didn't actually include those on this little cheat sheet. I'll, I'll do that. How to revert or restore a previous commit. I'll put those on there. It's pretty easy. Once you do it once, it's no big deal. Goodness gracious. Uh, okay, so what have we done? I've initialized git and then I made a commit. I made the commit in two stages. First, I added all the files with git a, git add, excuse me, git add, and then a period for all, all the files, git add all the files with a period. And then I made my first commit. And so we're good. I can make changes here. Once I do, by the way, let's actually go into this page and do another welcome message, another message. And if I save the file, now if I go to git status, you're going to see that I have another modified file here. And I could remove these if I wanted to and not stage them for commit. Or again, I go git add all. And if I did the git status again, it would be in green. I'm going to go git commit dash m and then quotation marks added a simple message to home page in the quotation marks hit enter now we have two commits git log now shows me two commits all right so uh now i am going to go to github i already have a github account but you would create one for free and what you're going to do once you log in is make a new repository and you're going to be presented with this. I'm actually going to keep mine private, just an FYI. Repository name, we'll, t we'll call this Topical Map AI. You can't have spaces here. You have to have underscores or dashes. Uh, topical Map AI. And then private, you can add a description if you want to. I'm going to leave that blank right here. Uh, I'm not going to worry about any of this stuff. It's not going to be like open source. I don't need to worry about license. I'm not going to do a readme because this isn't going to be public to anybody except for me. And I'm going to do create repository. Now, uh, this is going to be my URL where my code is stored. You'll use this when you deploy your app. For now, I still need to, like I don't see any of my code because I actually haven't pushed it to the remote repository. So what I'm going to do is set up. And I'll actually give you the code. We're going to use uh, this one. Yes, this one. We've already initialized Git on my machine, else we could actually do this one right here, by the way. But since we already uh, created, initialized Git, we're gonna use this one right here. Push an existing repository, it already exists, from the command line, which is what this is. You could do this in your terminal, or I have a terminal terminal open, this is my command, command line right here. So I'm actually gonna copy this. It's gonna be three different lines. So it's actually gonna ask me if I wanna paste all three lines. It'll do, I think, one at a time. Yeah, so I, I need to hit enter again here. It did that one. Hit enter again. It's gonna wait a few seconds, and now we're done. So, a few things here. I'm actually gonna clear this. I'm gonna say git status. On branch main, branch is up to date, nothing to commit, working tree's clean, we're good to go. If I come back here and hit refresh, now I can see my project. We're good. This is not public. No one else can see this but me at the moment. But you can see everything's here, including the uh, changes I made. Another message, right? I made this. So really quick, let's say I added yet another message, and I save that. Now I can go to get status to see this, and you can see. Uh, here's my thing, stage for commit, my changes, or whatnot. Unless I should just add that. Get add all of them. Get, get commit, excuse me, dash M, commit, added yet another message, etc. It doesn't matter. All right, so now everything's good on my machine, but if I do git status, you're actually going to see a, a new message now. Your branch is ahead of origin slash main by one commit. This origin slash main is this main. That's like the main branch in my thing. Origin would be, actually, I don't exactly know, but it's, it's, it's GitHub is what it's talking about right here. You can see my branch on my computer is ahead of this on GitHub by one commit. And if I make another change, which I'm not going to, and I committed it again, it would say your branch is ahead of blah, blah, blah by two commits.
So how do I get the GitHub updated from my local thing? You can see there's only one message here. It's not changed yet. It's easy. Git push, enter. And that's it. Now, more advanced would be when you go, when you add other branches, which I normally do. If I'm gonna add a new feature, I would do this. We'll say git branch test, okay? I'm gonna go to git branch, which is gonna list all my branches. And now you can see I have the main and the test. I'm still on main, but I created this other branch. Git checkout is the term, the command rather, for moving. Git checkout test, switch to branch test. Again, if I go to git branch, it'll say that I'm on test now. And if I go git status, it'll say on branch test, okay? Uh, let's go ahead and do a merge. This isn't like a full Git tutorial, but maybe this will be helpful. If, you, if I wanted to create, I usually don't by the way, but sometimes I do. If I wanted to create another branch in GitHub, I actually don't even remember how to do that. Um, I have it in my notes, not here. I will have to, it's, it's this basically, git remote, add, and then I think maybe the name of your branch. And then you have to set the upstream and then you can push changes. And by upstream, I mean like, where do I upload this branch? Well, I push this branch test to branch test once it's actually created in GitHub. It's not at the moment. Again, I actually have this in other notes, which I'll add. <laughs> I literally have to go look at it every time I do this. I think it's like git remote add and the name of the testing. Let's just try it. Git remote add test. Git remote add. I don't think it did anything. It gives, gives me some stuff there. Set up as a mirror to push or fetch. I'll be frank, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm really not, I have to go check out my notes. It doesn't matter for right now though. I usually don't even bother with it. I'll usually make another changes. This is on the test branch. I'll save that, uh, get status, just to show you that. Git add, git commit, added test feature. Just pretend that I've been working on this and this is a new feature now. And then go to git branch, I'm on test, git checkout main. All right, and now you can see that disappeared up there because I switched back to my other branch, which doesn't have that change, but I can merge it, git merge test. And now this is on branch main. Now, right now, since I merged those, uh, both of these branches are exactly the same, right? And if I go to git status, it's gonna say, I'm still behind. I've already made a commit just there when I merged. It's actually gonna, if I did uh, the log, git log, it'll actually show the same message from when I committed via that other branch. I'm on main, and this is my main commit, but it's just pulling the commit message from when I saved it. I hope this makes sense. If I'm moving too fast, I totally get it. This is not the most like easy subject to wrap your head around if you've never heard of this stuff before, but just these few commands, like adding all the files to a commit, committing, i.e. saving, and then learning how to push to GitHub, which I need to do, by the way, git push. Again, I was on main. I already knew I was on main. I should have checked before I pushed, maybe. And you can see it pushed main to main. Main on my computer to main on the GitHub remote repository. So if I go back here and refresh, this should have other stuff now. Yes. It has this, which was another commit I hadn't pushed yet. And I had this, which is what I merged in from the other branch, which should not appear here. It does not appear here. I can't remember the, the command, create the upstream. Doesn't matter. Uh, okay, so that's it. And by the way, another reason this is important is most easy hosting, including what I'm gonna do, will automatically update based on these git pushes. So I'm gonna make changes on my computer. Once I'm deployed and the app is live on the internet, I'm gonna change, I'm gonna make changes, I'm gonna do commits, and then I'm gonna git push. And whenever I do that, my app the public app is going to be updated because it's going to automatically pull all the changes from my GitHub URL. And we're gonna set that up, I believe, in the next video. Let me just actually double check that I don't need to do anything else here. I don't think I do. That's it, we've initialized Git, we can make changes, we can save changes via commits, and we can push to our remote repository, i.e. GitHub. That's it, we'll see you in the next bit.